Hello and welcome to this episode of the Worship Band Builder Podcast, where we are working with you to lay a foundation for skillful worship. I'm Eric Roberts, and this is my co-host, Emily Roberts. Hello. I said co-host. Kind of funny. I'm cracking up. She is cracking up. She does not even think that's funny. I can't say I really noticed. Okay, good. It just sounded funny in my head. You guys ever have that problem? <laughs> anyway, I As am... long as you're funny to yourself, dear. That's true. Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> you tell jokes and I'm like, I don't know. Was that funny? I, there have been times when I have had to alert you to the humor. The it's humor. true. Yes, that's funny. So when you say something and your voice makes a funny sound in your head, nobody else notices it. Do not mention it. <laughs> uh, today we're talking about distractions. I am totally distracted Ooh, in my head. Speaking of. I am, I am Mr. Distraction, and I think it's because I played drums Sunday. You think that's why? Yeah, I, you know, because you know how drummers are. They just get... Uh, I'm not sure, because that can't excuse the rest of your life before this Sunday. Well, that's true. That's true. Some people... Especially some of my friends, they just look at me and they say weird stuff like, what is wrong with you? Like, why do you, you can't, I, I don't know. I don't know what they see because I thought it was totally normal. <laughs> All right. So I was trying to think of some really funny distractions and you guys can, don't get offended. Okay. We're going to speak openly for a moment and then we'll be all well, professional again. I don't think we shared the title of this. Yeah. You distracted me from it. It's how to lead distraction free worship. I distracted you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I want to be able to lead distraction-free worship. And I've been thinking about that and talking about that, especially in some of my uh, stuff there at my church, working on different things. And our pastors brought that up in some meetings. Like, it's the point of this is to be distraction-free. If things become distracting in the worship service, then we're whether it's the instrumentation or the sound level, the volume, and that's one of the things we've been work on, working on, or the mix and all that. If those things are distracting, then they're a problem. Okay, so. Yes. The goal is always to create a space where people can connect with God. And we don't have a large window of time in which to do that. So it's critical that all of that time, or as much as possible, is distraction free. Now, you were going to ask me a question. Go ahead. Ask I will me. ask you a question. And we're going to paint this all into your, you got to look at your people, your church, your congregation, and figure out what's distracting. Because I guarantee you, if I come to some of your churches, I would be totally distracted. I'd be like, what in the world is going on? And then if you came to my church, you could be like, what is this? Some people, it's style, it's perp, it's people, it's different. Uh, everything can be different to different people, you know? So, Figure out, we're not going to give you real specific stuff like do this and this and this exactly, or don't be dancing, or do be dancing, or using flags, or don't be using flags. <laughs> that, I mean, that that's, you know. Take what serves you and yeah. leave the rest. So, so, for example, before I ask you this, oh, yeah, what, what are some of the main distractions that you've had during worship? And I'll say a couple of mine, too. Okay. There are some things for which the worship leader can be responsible, and some things he cannot Okay, the worship leader cannot be responsible for the space inside my head. And very often our distractions are inner distractions. They are, um, you know, whatever is on our minds at the time. We have to be able to set that aside and say, I am devoting the next 15 minutes to just trying to recognize God's presence. So that's the first one I or would say. Or 45 minutes, depending on what church you're in. Well, yes, yes. It seems like um, a lot of churches anymore. When I was growing up, it was 45 minutes. And now m almost every church I've been to in the last 10, 20 years, it has been three songs and get to the sermon. So, But if you're out there, this is a great time. Put in the comments on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, put the comments in there. How long is your worship set? Is it 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 45 minutes? Is it however long you feel like it? I mean, I know, I know just because of the ministries I've been in, it's all over the map. But I want to hear from you guys what it is. Is it ours is, I would say, two songs, 15 minutes, t tops, 10 minutes, 8, 12 minutes. 
I thought it was three. Aren't well, there three like we the... open her and then we have two. So like total, it's probably 15 minutes, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so inner distractions are our responsibility. That's not on the worship leader. Um, distractions from other people coming in and out. The worship leader can't do anything about the screaming baby that the you know mother is picking up and carrying out. We can't be responsible for that. Side note, the worship leader sometimes can't do anything about anything. I mean, <laughs> I, I've, I'm telling you, I've been in churches where we had like a problem with the flags rolling through. And as the worship leader, I couldn't do anything. I mean, I couldn't tell people like, don't do the flags or do the flags or don't do this or the tambourine. Like, tr- trust me, sometimes the worship leader <laughs> cannot do anything about anything. That's the rule, the rule, the, the, the lesson of the day. You know, if you got, you know, a, a sweet congregation member that keeps bringing a tambourine in, I mean, seriously, if you can figure out how to stop that without, you know. Well, and like the video that we saw, wasn't it? Did, did the cross fall off of the wall yeah. onto onto the drummer or something? Yeah, the, the cross that was like leaned up on the sanctuary literally fell over and like took the drummer out. And you've probably seen the video, but just, just Google it. Took the drummer out. Literally, the drum booth fell over. The drummer just onto the ground. And the, the worship leader didn't even know. He was up front with his in-ears in. And he's singing along and just kept singing for a few couple measures until The everybody... show must go on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we've, we've had stuff like that. That's pretty distracting and pretty funny. Yeah, those things are definitely distracting. And they are out of your hands. You know what else is distracting? What's um, that? Like plants. Plants are distracting to me. <laughs> Like um, a lot of plants, if you have a church where, and it's just me, so I can say this if I want to, just if you have a lot of plants coming out of the sanctuary, like the stage, and I, I've been in a church where they would just like bring in more and more plants, and I'm like, what, what's all the plants? Like I'm trying to get around the plants. But personally, when I go into a church and there's a lot of plants growing out of the stage, then I'm like, I'm just sort of like distracted. Are you mentally taken to the jungle? Yeah, and... You know, it's it happens. And plants are cool. I mean, some people, that's like, <laughs> I'm not against plants, but I think it's just when they start growing out of different places on the stage, like out of the drummer, it's like big, big tree coming out. <laughs> but that's just part of, that's in your head too. That's the in yes, your head. You, yes. you, you go into Those an environment. Those are the things that you have to turn off and say, I am not accepting this thought today. So I've mentioned a few things in this episode already, like um, flags, tambourines, and plants growing out of stages. Now, if you know what denomination that I found all of those things in, (laughs) leave it in the comments below or send me an email. If you know what denomination I was in in that era, send it over. All right. Uh, Let's see. So the things that the worship leader should potentially be able to manage okay and we'll say manage rather than control okay he's gonna manage some stuff he's gonna try to yes okay so because that's the question as a leader what can we do to remove distractions well first of all now everybody in worship service is not sensitive to this but if you are a musician and you know when people are singing on or off pitch or when they are playing on or off time, okay, when it is speeding up or slowing down, okay, if, if you recognize these things, they are all distractions that should be able to be eliminated with the right amount of practice. Yeah, so basically, if you're a musician and you go into a worship service, you're already cursed with distractions. The drummer's speeding up. You're like, what in the world? The singers are off key. You're like, oh my goodness, the sound is too out of balance. Y- your whole mind is distracted. At least mine is. So it's very hard to overcome that as a producer and as a, just as a musician. Spending so much time critically listening to so many different uh, mixes, it's hard to even sit through some services where I'm trying to focus. So listen to our last podcast about how to get your focus on God. Um because it might not be at church. It might not be at that moment where you're in there. Things are distracting you. Um, and everybody's going to respond differently. So we're going to be uh, intentional about creating an environment for our people. So nothing I said about flags or plants is really bad. It's just a stylistic thing. So 
you know your church, and uh, you have to do what helps them focus. Uh, part of this is has to do with an older crowd versus a younger crowd. An unsaved crowd versus a saved crowd, which sounds funny, but, really? you know. I, I'm not sure where you're going with this. Go well, lead the way. I want to hear what you, yeah, what you well, have to say. You, if you have an unsaved crowd, you're going to try to do different stuff than if you have a whole bunch of, if you have a whole bunch of new Christians and your church is a bunch of young, new family Christians, you're going to do stuff differently. Or if you're trying to um, be a seeker friendly church, you're going to, you're going to be doing things differently, picking different songs, you know, I, I mean, uh, explaining weird stuff like, Sometimes you can tell when you're in a really seeker-friendly church because they'll go to do something like take an offering and then they'll make a bunch of excuses before that. Like, this is not for you. This is if you're brand new here. They Instead of like if you're in a church that's really established Christians and they're like, bless God, give us the money, you know, let's do this now. You know, it's diff- It's a different feeling. You can kind of feel if you're, you're leading worship for... Uh, a, an older crowd, you're probably going to want to be doing hymns. If you're leading for a younger crowd, you're probably going to want to crank it up a little bit and do some uh, Toby Mac. Well, that so, is a generalization that I can't say necessarily d- applies all the time. There are a lot of young people that are seeking out traditional services these days. And um, and I have an older so friend who really loves Toby Mac. Okay, there Much, you go. M- way up into his 70s, and he's jamming on Toby Mac. So, okay, yes, I generalized we can, people we can't a little bit. We can do that. And, and really, I'm not sure that this is directly related to eliminating distractions. Um, it can be harder for people to connect with God um, according to their musical preferences, but you can't make everybody happy all the time. Uh, that is something that um, having a, a blended selection of songs may help um, to try to appeal to a wider audience. Um, yeah, maybe I was, I, I'm just talking and maybe this, these are like global distraction elements if you have a lot of older people and you're singing all toby mac songs you're probably distracting them or if you have a a lot of young families and you're singing a lot of really old hymns you could be you're you're causing you could be causing distraction i mean you're not maybe meeting them where they and anything to me that causes me to sort of feel weird about what's going on distracts me from worship so it's not it's not just style, and it isn't just somebody singing real loud into my ear behind me. It's also the production that I walk into. So if you know if you walked into a church, like if you and I walked into a church right now, and they started just you know let's worship, and then they came out with like six guys and they did Gregorian chant for like thirty minutes, I would just be like, this is just very distracting. Like I don't know what this is. Um, you so. would maybe just not be able to connect to that. Exactly. Okay. Um, I think one of the biggest distractions in worship services comes from distortion and feedback or um, a missed microphone cue. Those kind of things can also hopefully be avoided by having a trained sound team. Our sound... uh, Volunteers are beautiful souls, and they are volunteering uh, selflessly because they don't get the kind of recognition that people standing on the stage get. But very often, they are willing hearts who have come in, and they have no training. They are doing the best that they can, but we're still going to end up with distractions distortion, feedback, missed mic cues, all of those things that um, just require a little bit of know-how and a, and a kind of a, a mindset when you go into the sound booth that you, you are a vital part of the team and you have to be paying attention every moment that the worship is going on to make things flow seamlessly. Yeah, I think the most uh, oppressive noise is high feedback. I mean, and, and it can happen so fast. And it can be so oppressive and not just distracting, but just really off-putting. 
and like can damage your ears. Uh, you put a microphone, like a beginner singer puts a microphone in front of a speaker and it could just immediately just be like, you know, terrorizing to your ears. And that can happen right during worship service. Um, I mean, we had a, uh, one of our team members put a, put a guitar down too close to the subwoofer, which is where it should have been. But I think it was running through the sub and it was like accidentally running through. And it just about sounded like an airplane started taking off. Like the pastor's getting ready to come talk. And then it's like, and then just revved up like an airplane taking off and Mm. nobody knew what it was. And it was like, finally somebody was like, Oh, it's the guitar. And you guys have all heard that. Those, so, you know, those are big distractions. Um, that you, it takes a lot of time. Everybody's going to do that. You're going to fight fight against that stuff. Hopefully, you're not dropping crosses out of the ceiling onto your drummer on a normal <laughs> basis, you know. But you probably are like getting feedback. You're, you know, definitely pastors are probably listening to this. And you know, if, if they had a penny for every time somebody didn't turn their mic on, they'd probably be, you know, rich. I mean, pastors. That, that's the worst part. I think would be being a pastor. You get up there like. Uh, <laughs> You know, trying to do the microphone, that's it's every pastor's, like, thing. I wonder if they teach that in Bible school, like, what to do. What to do when the sound guy doesn't turn your microphone on. Yeah, sound it happens person, all the time. not to sound, stereotype. Sound girl, turn, I would, yeah, whoever. It happens all the time. I mean, it, to the best of us, I missed a mic cue running running sound a couple of weeks ago on the live stream. I had, I had a mic up too loud or whatever, you know, and it started, and I was like, oh, or whatever. So you work with your team to get rid of distractions. As a leader... I think what 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 I'm feeling like as a leader, you got to know your people, you got to know what's distracting, and then you're just going to have to put together a plan to just attack all those distractions, simplify a lot, because the more simplified your process, the more simplified your sound system, simplified your band is. I know when people get like 50 people on stage, distractions are everywhere. You know, you it, the more the more of this you get going, you get better at it. But um, so. Invest the right amount of time in practice. Train your sound team. And if you need to, invest in training your musicians. You know, it may require uh, some guitar lessons. If they, if you've only got one guitar player and he or she can barely strum, then... Oh, that's um, distracting. That is a worthy investment um, to... Get them some weekly lessons. We have resources, of course, on Worship Band Builder. We have the foundations programs that are nice because uh, people can do them on their own time at home. You don't have to teach them. Um, So they're very practical. But if you prefer, you can uh, sign up for private lessons. That's that's another way to go about it. Um, Practice not distracting. I think... I think in uh, this overall thing, as I'm thinking as a leader, just simplify, get people trained, you know, get people on board with your vision, and don't settle for a lot of silliness. I think that's part of a leader's role. That part of this was how to lead this distraction-free worship. Don't settle for a bunch of silliness. Just make sure you put together a plan. Like this is the the way I see this happening. This is the vision of how I see this happening. And work that out with your whole team, leading worship through the right style, through the right song selection, through the right tech stuff, through the right musicianship. So I created foundations because I realized all of the problems that I felt as a worship leader could be solved by going all the way down to the basics and just training everybody on these basic things. Because it's, it is the small stuff that usually runs the worship service, like the feedback, the off key, the lead guitar player playing out weird notes or the drummer not even playing on tempo and everybody, nobody can worship to that. Uh, if you're trying to produce a modern worship experience, you can't, you can't do that. So foundationally trained people is really the key and have a vision for distraction free worship service. Know what you're trying to accomplish when you walk in there. And it, that'll solve a lot of your problems. Cause I know a lot of you guys are stressed out just like, I know I was stressed out a lot in ministry uh, when I was because you're, you're always trying to make things work and make a lot of people work together. You said one other thing that uh, I thought was insightful that we had not covered in our notes here, and that was to simplify. And that may be um, a whole new insight to someone out there. Um, 
it can be complicated when you have a lot of people that want to be on stage. Um, but I think the resolve to simplifying and keeping everyone involved is spreading them out, giving them each a different week maybe to be on the stage, maybe even giving certain people different responsibilities, something that's maybe a more more administrative role or something so that they are still involved, but um, you don't have to have so much going on on stage. I know that can be a sensitive area, um, but just to recap, we said to train practice, simplify, and know what you want. Have a vision for what you want to happen every Sunday morning. That sounds like um, some kind of athletic thing where they visualize yeah. their success. You know, maybe, you that's, maybe that's what we need to do. I'm going to. All right, so next week, join us right here again on Tuesday and on Thursday live for the Bible study on our Facebook page, and you can always... Drop us a note. Tell us. I'd love to hear your most distracting moment. Yes. And we'll see you next time. Bye.